Hi everyone, this is Richard. In this video, we are going to go a little bit more into detail with the Atom text editor, as well as learning a little bit more about elements. So let's open up, this is, this is where we left off last time. Um, if you don't know what these are, you might want to view the last um, video that we did. Um, basically, opening up the Chrome or the um, Dartium browser, and this just activates the pub serve method so that we can actually use the Dartium on our web application. Okay, so here is our web application. Let's go through these files. pubspec.yaml. Um, as I mentioned before, this is basically a way to notify the pub package manager of what to do, what dependencies to gather, how to actually bundle the thing together and, and make the application work. So things that are essential, basically nothing is really essential depending on how simple the program is. But if you want to pu publish it on pub.dartlang.org, so basically on the which we won't be doing anytime soon, but but on the a main website for other people to use our packages, um, then you'll have it need to at least have several things: the name, the version, and a brief description. We'll go. The name is obvious. We'll go over the version in just a second. Description basically just anything a quick comment about it. You can even put documentation, author, homepage, if as much or as little about yourself um, that that you feel comfortable putting down. Environment. This is talking about which version of the Dart SDK. Okay, and then dependencies, dev dependencies. Dependencies means what does your web application need? Dev dependency basically for development purposes. What do you need? Because when you compile it to a production for deployment. Okay, so that you can actually activate your actual web application. This stuff does not get included. So unit test is just a way to test your code, just to make sure that there are no last minute or even there are no bugs in it, significant problems. And it does what you want it to do. So this doesn't get part of the main web application. We're not going to be using this. I'll just delete it. Okay, dependencies. Foobar, by the way, it's um, foo and bar or foobar. Uh, they're basically they're just nonsense terms. Um, it's kind of like when people talk about um, you want to sell some product, you'll call it a widget. You know, not graphical widget, but just something. I have this thing called a widget or something like that. That that's what foobar basically is. Just something, some package. There's no such package really. If you want to comment it out, it's the pound sign. Okay, and this I don't know if you can read that, but it's still foobar will activate it this way. Okay. Um, when it comes to versioning, just I'm going to men mention something quickly. When you start a web application, it's typically 0 0.0 0.1. The syntax, the um, uh, for this, the convention of versions typically is the last of the three decimals. Um, this is basically it represents starting of a program or bug fix bug fixes so if you have 0 0.0.1 0 0.0.2 0 0.0.3 those are just minor bug fixes in what you actually have in what you are actually making the the second decimal so 0 0.1 0 0.2.0 0, 0 0.3 right here this basically represents major big changes adding new features Okay, so typically when you talk about a program, we're dealing with program 0 0.1 versus 0 0.2. 0 0.2 um, will be compatible, backward compatible with 0 0.1. Okay, so if I have 0 0.1, it will have all the features until we change this first number right here. So 0 0.1 and 0 0.2, everything in 0 0.1 will be in 0 0.2. But not everything in 0 0.2 will be in 0 0.1. Okay, so you're adding features, but you're not taking them away. And the purpose of that is maintain what we call backwards compatibility. So in future library versions or for future versions of this application, it will be compatible with previous versions. So that when you made something a year ago, you'll know that it still is good. And if you have libraries that are older, it'll still be, it'll still work. Okay. Well, the first number, version 1.0.1, .1, version 2, version 3, anytime you change this first number, that means you're breaking the API. Okay. You're breaking compatibility with previous versions. Maybe you're taking out a, um, an API. 
or maybe you are um, changing it. So not just adding, but you're changing it. So previous code that you wrote will not be usable anymore. You have to change it to match the new breaking code. So the first number again, one last time, is when you're breaking the, the interface, the application programming interface, the second number is typically what you use to say you're adding features, major changes, but you're not breaking compatibility, and the last one, bug fixes, and you're not really changing the interface, adding or taking away at all. Okay? So I, I think that's enough. Um, in order to, since there's no such application, let me just go ahead and right-click, PubGet, and let's see what happens. Okay? Fail to resolve dependencies. There could not find package foobar because there's no such thing, right? It's a fake. So I'll just comment it out and let's try that again. Do pub get again. Oops, forgot to save it. Got to do that. Okay. No formatting changes, by the way. It automatically formats things when you save it. Let's try one last time. Pub get completed. This time it actually worked. Okay. Um, let's go to main. Okay, import dart.html, and remember, this isn't a package. This is a part of the Dart program, um, so the Dart language, the fundamental part. So all you need to do is Dart HTML, pretty simple, straightforward. Main CSS. Again, I'm not very good with it. Just I'm going to say body, background, color. I'll put blue instead. Okay, you could put either the code or the the number. How do you get the code? You have to actually look it up, or you have to just know it index.html. Um, so we went in previous videos, we went through most of this, I think. Doc type is HTML5. A couple of things we didn't do. So notice in the head section itself, this is not rendered, correct? Then we have this thing called the title here. So title is in the head section, so it's not actually rendered on the web page. Where is it rendered? Well, let's take a look here. So start, start, start or serve. And then we'll go ahead and hit the Chrome wrapper. And we notice title is right here. Title is right there. Okay, so if you change this title number one, save, and I'm going to redo that, title number one. So it's not rendered here, it's up here. Okay, so that's that goes in the head. Link. Now, if we have an HTML page, how are we supposed to know where the other files are. So we want main.css to interact with it and main.dart to interact with this, or rather this to interact with these two. So how do we let the computer know where are these files? For CSS, it's going to be up here. Link and rail relationship equals style sheet, cascading style sheet, and href hypertext reference is main.css. Notice it's on the same line. It, there's no folders in between. So basically, main.css. The um, down below for the Dart, we have script. Okay, T script type equals application slash Dart. Source equals main.dart, and close the script. Now, when you think about it, why is one a link and the other is a script? I'm not exactly sure. Um. It didn't have to be that way. I think that's that just they decided to make it that way itself. Why didn't they just put link, link? I, I, I guess if you're making a script, it didn't make sense. Um, just for the record, if you in JavaScript, you are allowed to put JavaScript on the same page as HTML. Maybe that was one of the reasons. Um, you, you could put it on the same page right inside of here. Um, and and just as long as it's between the two script tags. In Dart, that is not allowed. You cannot put Dart on the same page as an HTML page. One of the reasons, well, it was just a design decision. Remember, Dart is intended for huge applications where you want to keep these things separate so it's easier to track and monitor, okay? Um, JavaScript, why do we have this right here? This basically is a script that says, when I compile main.dart into JavaScript, you need a script tag because when you compile it, this HTML doesn't get changed. You don't want to change that. So you're going to have to have a code, a, a script here for Dart, and a script here for JavaScript. If you're using JavaScript, this will be ignored. If you're using 
Dart, this will be ignored. But you put both in there just to be safe if you're going to compile the JavaScript or if you're just going to keep it as Dart and use Dartium. Okay? Careful about SRC. Where is this file going to be located? To activate it, you got to go to CD Dart Applications Starter and you got to do Pub Build. And it'll compile it puts it right here, right here. So index.html, it'll have that same code. It doesn't change. Main.dart.js, it's a kind of a mess. Main.dart.js. So it'll be right there so you can actually run it in your browser. Okay. So I think that was the main just review of the, um, uh, of the web application in a little more detail. And uh, in next video, we'll just go over the elements themselves. Okay. Thank you.